Hey guys, this is Tyler Zombro with Tread Athletics and today I wanted to touch on attack angles and how to correspondingly adjust with your arsenal to combat this. So what are attack angles? Uh, when we look at attack angles, we're looking at the swing plane from a hitter's perspective. So I also want to preface this conversation with saying that good hitters tend to have very adjustable attack angles. So guys are able to flatten out their swing or they can make it steeper when they need. So why is this important to us from a pitcher's perspective? So we've had quite a few pitchers. We'll use Mitch Keller today as a good example of this, but guys are able to kind of create a distinction between four seams and sinkers and they wonder, how do I utilize both of these pitches? Whom do I throw them to? Righties, lefties? Does the swing plane matter? And ultimately, I think it does. So with that, when we look at attack angles, guys who have flatter swings, meaning it's close to zero degrees through the zone on average, those guys are gonna be better suited to hit carry fastballs. On the inverse of that, guys who have steeper swings, you know, maybe getting positive 10 degrees, 15 degrees, whatever it is, they're able to hit balls that have depth a little bit better. So sinkers, off speed down, etc. So how do we go about utilizing this information for success to the pitcher's side? Looking at Mitch, Mitch has the ability to throw a four seam with a little bit of cut ride, and he also has established a seam shifted sinker. So with this, when you're looking at lineups, we can say, okay, for hitters A, B, C, D, maybe they have flatter swings, let's go with sinkers. We're gonna promote more ground balls, maybe get some swing and miss, and we're gonna attack them in that manner. On the opposite of that, if somebody has a very uphill swing, now he's able to maybe beat them with four seams up in the zone. So it's really important to create that distinction going into an outing, so that way you know which hitters am I predominantly throwing what fastball to. Now, with that in mind, something that's often forgotten with this is, we're still not trying to throw 60 to 70% fastballs. At the end of the day, just utilizing attack angles to justify more fastball usage is probably not the wisest decision, so keep that in the back of your mind. A couple of hitting examples I wanted to bring up here. Mike Trout is a guy that comes to mind who kind of has that steep uphill component of his swing. You can really visualize that with how he hits the low ball. So off speed down in the zone usually doesn't fare very well against him. You're gonna see him able to lift that pitch and do some damage. And then somebody with a flat swing, thinking of Jose Altuve and damage that he does to pitches up in the zone. So again, looking at kind of these attack angles with how hitter swings play, just visualize that and able to think of, okay, if this is the swing plane that this guy's bat is on, how do I beat it, right? So I think that's ultimately why carry fastballs became so popular in the game is because hitters started to get more uphill. Now hitters are starting to reverse that trend a little bit and are able to get on top of some carry fastballs. And it's pretty cool to see the game kind of revolutionize in that manner where we're seeing hitters adjust very well, of course with technology. And I think we're finally starting to get a lot of educated hitting coaches out in the space. So. Again, we're always looking at these trends, seeing how we can combat them, and ultimately having this flexibility to recognize how am I gonna shape my arsenal based on swing path. I know we've talked predominantly about fastballs, but this applies to breaking balls as well. So looking at guys who have a flatter swing, breaking balls with more depth are going to be very beneficial. On the other side of that, with guys who have that elevated lifty swing plane, breaking balls with depth, if they're able to get underneath them, likely gonna do some damage. So this makes me think about sweepers that might not have a ton of depth to them against lofty swings can actually play well. I and mean, you'll see a ton of guys who have those big sweepers have very positive average launch angles against, seeing that get to 35, 40 degrees, et cetera, generating a ton of pop-ups. And again, that's a really educated decision you can make to say, okay, if this is predominantly a pop-up pitch, how am I going to utilize that? Whereas a guy with a flatter swing, if that pitch has some backspin to it on the sweeper, they're able to kind of be on top of that a little bit more and maybe not pop it up as much. So 
Again, all these pitchers are gonna profile very differently based upon the hitter's swing, but if we can position ourselves to design our arsenal and attack a hitter based on his swing characteristics, I think you're gonna find a lot more success with how you're performing on the mound. So that's what I have on attack angles. It's a great concept to understand. Hopefully this gives you some good clarity with how to approach certain hitters. Uh, and I appreciate you guys watching and we'll see you in the next video.